Jakarta is tumbling beneath the weight of buildings because of the depletion of water levels underground. Every few months, the city is flooded as the Java Sea is rising due to global warming. The Indonesian parliament has approved a law to relocate the nation's capital after years of talking about possible solutions. Stay till the end to know why Indonesia's future lies in this new capital city. Welcome back to our channel, Build to Innovate, where we provide you with facts related to mega projects worldwide. Before heading on to the video, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell icon so you never miss any of our updates. Indonesia has announced a new capital that will be called Nusantara. The bill was approved by the parliament to relocate the capital from Jakarta as it is sinking rapidly. The idea was first proposed in 2019, which suggested building a new capital 800 miles away on the island of Borneo. The critics are saying that the new name could be confusing and the move itself fails to consider environmental factors. Jakarta is overcrowded, polluted and sinking due to the over-extraction of groundwater. The city sits on swampy land on the large island of Java, with a population of 10 million. Air pollution and traffic jams in the city are so notorious that the government ministers are always escorted by the police to reach meetings timely. The government hopes to unburden Jakarta by building a new capital in mineral-rich East Kalimantan, which is home to only 3.7 million people, according to the most recent census. The planning minister, Suharso Manuafa, said in parliament, the new capital has a central function and is a symbol of the identity of the nation, as well as a new center of economic gravity. However, the critics are against the idea. According to them, the construction of a new city will lead to the expansion of palm oil plantations and logging in an area rich in diverse wildlife and lush rainforests. Borneo is the world's third largest island, and almost the entire land is still unexplored. The 18 million inhabitants on this island are concentrated on the coast, unlike the 2 million inhabitants that live in the inland areas. According to some studies on the relocation of the capital, Nusantara would be a natural catastrophe in the making. The greatest pressure will be on the island's orangutans, a species already in danger of extinction. Some groups, while representing the people of Borneo, have also raised their concerns, saying that the environment and culture could be endangered by the move. The name of the new city has also sparked a debate on social media. Some stated that the name could be confusing in the future because Nusantara is an old term used in Indonesia to refer to the archipelago nation as a whole. According to the planning minister, the capital's new name was chosen by the president, considering Indonesia's geography. The move would cost around $32.4 billion and will be regarded as one of the biggest infrastructures the Indonesian government has ever undertaken. Indonesia is not the first country to change its capital. Pakistan, Brazil, and Nigeria have also changed their capitals to newly planned and constructed cities in the past. Nusantara will act as a low emissions area, unlike Jakarta, and it will contain the government and administrative functions. Borneo is more central with respect to Indonesia and an ideal place to establish a new city. Nusantara intends to become the country's node and will be the center for industries, including the pharmaceutical, medical, and technology sectors. East Kalimantan is the second largest province in Indonesia and the eastern area of the island. The region consists of two important cities, Samarinda and Balikpapan. The activities of these cities are basically chopping down the original forest and extracting oil, which is not good for the environment. Nusantara can't afford to be like Jakarta, which would be failing to design an environmental policy that allows long-term sustainability. But it cannot copy the dynamics of its future neighbors, Samarinda and Balikpapan either. Politicians have considered this, and according to the president of Indonesia, Joko Widodo, Nusantara will be the starting point for an Indonesia based on green economy, through innovation and technology. He has also ordered not to invade protected green areas, even though these are scarce and not connected with one another. The initial models demonstrate that Nusantara will incorporate buildings surrounded by greenery and would avoid the urban planning mistakes of the 20th century. So far, nothing is specified regarding its urban development, although the western sprawl has been ruled out in favor of high-rise buildings. By taking other new cities into account, particularly in China, we hope that Nusantara would avoid the colonialism seen in Jakarta. 
The environmental policies of this city would replicate that of sponge cities to avoid the environmental problems of the current capital. But what would be the future of the city of Jakarta? Whenever a city has been moved to another place in the past, it continues to be populated and some have even grown, such as Lagos, Rio de Janeiro, Melbourne, or Philadelphia. Jakarta would not drop in size because there are no plans to relocate the population and stop the city from gradually sinking. Research suggests that Jakarta will continue to sink for centuries as long as there are inhabitants and currently 10 million people live in Jakarta. Around one and a half million public officials would be relocated, which would destabilize Jakarta. The city would most probably deteriorate without the continuous flow of public revenue. Theoretically speaking, Jakarta is Indonesia's financial and commercial hub due to the fact that the entire infrastructure of the country is focused there. However, the relocation of the capital would only be a death sentence for inevitably sinking Jakarta. Jakarta can't sustain itself and will surely sink in the future decades. A large part of the population's home will be underwater, or, in other words, a large part of the population will have emigrated elsewhere. The sinking is as slow as in Venice, so the government of Indonesia still has time to plan and relocate the population in Jakarta. The relocation of the capital is mandatory, and part of Jakarta will die. Nusantara is an alternative to Jakarta and will require a considerable environmental impact, which is the reason behind most of the criticism that this project has received lately, along with the negative opinion of the Jakarta residents that cannot leave. The unpopular opinion is that some cities should be extended rather than creating another one. Nusantara would most probably merge Samarinda and Balikpapan to accommodate the migrations expected to this region of Borneo. The international community is observing the project closely within the country's sovereign limits and in the hope that the errors in water and global warming mitigation policies are not repeated. Do tell us your views about this new capital that will replace Jakarta in the comment section down below. If you've reached this far, like the video, subscribe to our channel, and press the notification bell so you never miss any future updates. See you in another video. Until then, take care.